All right, guys, so we have the two first aid pouches here that we were telling you about. This will have been hung on the web belt or your web gear. Um, and every soldier will have carried one of these. We have two examples here. One is later, one's earlier. And this one is the package containing our original Carlisle kit from World War II. You would simply open it up by the button flap and pull it out. This one is an OD green color. And these Carlisle kits was originally designed and took its name from the Carlisle Barracks Military Reservation in Pennsylvania in the early 1920s. And this was actually the same medical um, place, the medical department equipment laboratory was the proper name for it that was established on uh, the 1st of October, 1920. Um, first aid packets have been in use for the military since the, I mean forever, but really in the, when the Great War started, World War One, these things. Individual first aid uh, kits and packets start being more widespread, being more widespread use. Yeah, and they they look different than this. Oh, yeah. Um, they were more like a bronze or brass in color. But they were still had the name Bauer and Black as this one does on those. And I wish we had one of those here. But they, instead of pulling open like this one does on the side, they had a pull tab on the bottom. And... Then you have your contents on the bottom of what is actually in here. Now, until the early 1940s, these Carlisle packets contain two bandages and some safety pins like a freaking baby diaper, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, you get shot, you basically putting on a baby diaper. <laughs> I mean, medical technology, I mean, especially in the World War One era, really wasn't that great. I mean... It, there were starting to be advancements, of course. I mean, I mean, but it's it's not going to be what you would think of today. And and even considering even in World War II, the medical t advancement and technology had greatly increased between the two conflicts, in which we're about to show you. Well, this thing, man, went through transition after transition of being developed. I mean, there's different types of tins, different colors of tins, different ways to open a tin. And they finally come up with this style um, right around mid, I guess, the beginning of World War II, 1940 to 42, somewhere in that time frame. And this is an original from then. This is unopened, has been unopened since the war. It's a first aid pack at U.S. government Carlisle model. So open pull tab, red color indicates back of dressing, put other side nets to wound, Bauer and Black Division of the Kendall Company, Chicago, and your contents on the back are crystalline, uh, crystalline sulfonilamide. Sulfonilamide. Okay. Sulfonilamide. He, he says it better than I do. I don't <laughs> understand. He's, okay. I, I don't understand the medical terminology sometimes. Okay. But I worked in the medical field. Yeah, so really. What, we what, <laughs> yeah, so what, 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 what in the world, man? Come I on, mean, now. I'm just a dumb country hick, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I guess. You don't have any excuses because I have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, some of you guys, like I said, maybe like, you guys are actually going to open up an original? Well, well, to answer your question, yeah. <laughs> we are. Yeah, because these things are actually fairly easy to find. They're fairly common. I mean, you got to think thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. I mean, probably millions of these first aid packets have been made. Because, um, like I said, they've been issued out in with uh, infantry web gear. And, I mean, even in non-combat posts, you're still going to find these. So, it's an individual first aid kit. So, every soldier, marine, sailor... I guess if you want to call it an airman, an airman <laughs> would have that in the, on their person. Um, oh, not for the camera. Uh, would have that on their person. So you got to think, a ton of these <coughs> are made. And after the war, I mean, they're surplused out, uh, sold off, given to other nations. I mean, they they come up all over the place. Well, I mean, I've got five of this same as that one. I bought these in the bulk, so I figure we could. 
I've never opened up one of these. I haven't either. And I've always one. been <laughs> curious. I would do. You know, I want to see how it's held up over time, for one. For two, I want to try it out. I want you to shoot me in the leg. Yeah, uh, we're not going to try that. Um, we oh, okay. we, also, we well. also don't advise you to do that if you want to test your own out. <laughs> yeah, viewer discretion advice. <laughs> yeah, viewer discretion advice. We do not sponsor you testing this out on your own person. We're not shooting one another, so don't get your panties in the water on the other side of this video, okay? Uh, <laughs> But we do want to see how this held up over time. See what it looks like for one, because we're just curious. Let's see how it stood up to father time. Yeah, we're reenactors who are World War II enthusiasts and want to see what they remember, use. And we're stupid enough to open up the original packet. Let's see. All right, you ready? Let's do it. So you pull the tab that's on the side. Let's say, oh, I'm shot. I'm shot. Jack, help. You pull this tab. And ideally what would happen is this. Okay. It comes out from around it dude this is so eerie opening up this thing after 75 years okay well no going back now she's open um <laughs> so it comes off as a wire piece and you ready for this let's do it oh um i can't get <laughs> well um we might have some technical difficulty oh oh, oh oh all the sulfonilamide is all over the place oh oh dude Dude, check this out. Wow. Perfectly preserved over. Oh, years dude. And years. Dude, and check this out. It's got some kind of cardboard gasket or something around it. Yeah, and there's, um, of course, your five grams of sulfonilamide. That's oh. uh, what that's typically used for is um, it's an antibiotic. So it's going to attempt. Attempt is a really big word. It's going to try and stop an infection or at least prohibit it until you get to an aid station you know jack actually found out something kind of cool is what they use this for today yes uh what it's used for today is actually to uh, combat yeast infections uh-huh so you guys get the picture yeah. <laughs> but i don't recommend opening up one of these things and using 75 year old sulfamilahide on yourself yeah don't do that um but <laughs> cancer or something. I don't know. dude this thing is not leaking anywhere from what i could see mm -hmm. Which is great. I feel the powder inside. It's been perfectly preserved. I mean, obviously, it was made to be, not, I mean, I guess somewhat sterile. I just hope my hands don't turn green or something now. Yeah, good luck. But uh, it says, uh, for external use only, yeah, don't swallow this stuff. Please don't. Uh, five grams of crystalline, sulfamilahide, H and HWND. Directions sprinkle evenly over wound before applying field aid dressing. Tested and subdivided by Heinsen, Westcott, and Dunning Incorporated, Baltimore, Maryland. Pull open to open pull rip flap. You know, and dude, one of the things that comes to mind when I freaking see this mm -hmm. is Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially on that iconic beach scene. What you're seeing whenever they're treating the medics are treating Here, those wounds, that. that white powder, this is gonna be the this is at sulfonilamide. It's um I mean, I think it's, I know it's on Saber Private Ryan. I think it's on Band of Brothers too, which obviously that's not a very good historical source, but it's a good visual representation. Uh, when they were bleeding out and they're pouring that white powder onto the soldier, that's what that is. They're trying to help stop the bleeding and stop an infection whenever they wrap that wound. Okay, so <clears throat> below it, and there is a little powder on the top of this bandage. Um... Do that, it's so eerie opening up this thing. But uh this is the bandage itself. It's kind of hard to take out. Um, it looks like it's got a couple of spots on it. And definitely you could feel some of the powder as in the box, and you can see it on here um on the packaging of this itself. So we probably want to wash our hands really good after yeah, this. Probably a good idea. But uh, you want to take a look at this bandage? Yeah, let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so we're gonna open up the bandage and try to be as gentle as we can, so we can put it back in the original wrapper after we're finished and preserve it. Maybe if the paper allows us. Yeah, it is stuff together. <laughs> well, we have more. It might be sealed. Yeah, yeah I think it's kind of glued. Oh, there we go. Dude, it looks more like a cloth gauze. Dude, that's actually still like perfectly good. Yeah. Well, 
perfectly good for how old it is. Don't be using any of these first aid kits for real emergencies. I mean, you probably could. Yeah, I mean, w without the uh, powder. No, or the bandage itself. It'll probably infect you. It, I wouldn't suggest using it. Unless you absolutely had to. Unless you absolutely have to. If that's the only thing you got, go ahead. Yeah. But don't go buy these for first aid use. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, don't don't use a 75-year-old bandage if you cut your finger off, please. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> um, at least it's the only thing you have, and then it's better than nothing. But uh, as you guys can see, it's perfectly fine, man. Check this out. There's not a mark on this thing. No, it's like perfectly been preserved, obviously, because it's in the container. But... Well, um, we're going to fold this thing back up best we can. And... I don't know, put it back in the box, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's a tight fit to begin with, but... And even if we don't continue to have this bandage, we still... I mean, you can still open this box and close it, put other stuff in there after you wash it out and keep it in your first aid pack. But um, this is... I know what? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I know for uh, this is for the reenactors that are watching our video. I know a lot of people will actually keep their uh, grand gas, uh, the blank systems, in that carbon uh, pouch. Really? Yeah, it, it fits perfectly. And see, you can close this thing back up, and it snaps perfectly back in place. <clears throat> this metal ring that come off of it. Well, we're just gonna, I guess, discard of it. Or attempt to put it back on. We'll see what happens. Um. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen. No, all right, we're discarding of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think that's going yeah, to happen. Rest in peace to the metal band that's on there. But but uh, if you guys want a metal band, let us know. <laughs> Hundred dollars. Looks like it's made out of some out of copper, actually. Oh, go sell that. Get you a whole penny. Whole penny. Hey, meth heads go steal power from service <laughs> for stuff like that. But uh, pretty cool to be able to take a look at this thing, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely a unique experience.